we go. Oh, sorry. Hey, welcome to this uh, what front lever. A front lever tutorial. In this video, I'll teach you how to do a front lever. So let's get started. But let's first take a fast nap. What? Wake up! Uh, I mean, no. I mean, yeah. Uh, let's get started with this front lever tutorial. So you want to learn how to do the front lever. Well, you've come to the right place. I'm Dr. Yacht and I can hold the front lever for over 50 seconds, which is in the world record range, not to toot my own horn. <laughs> but you kind of did. Dude. Anyway, it took a lot of hard work and a lot of training to get to that level. And I want to teach you how to do the front lever. But the first thing we need to ask ourselves before we even start learning the front lever is, what is the front lever? The front lever is considered to be a fundamental strength exercise when it comes to gymnastics and calisthenics. It is a display of excellent pulling strength. So what is this exercise? The front lever is a static pulling movement in which one, the body faces upwards. Two, the body is completely straight. Three, the body is parallel to the ground. Four, the arms are locked. And optionally, five, the spine is in a neutral position, demonstrating complete control. The upper back has the tendency to round up because of the way gravity pulls. You can prevent this by pulling your shoulder blades together. This is also known as scapulae retraction. If you pull just enough, you can manage to stay completely neutral. Combine all these points and you get what many consider to be the perfect full front lever. So now we know what the front lever is, but how do you build up strength to do a front lever? More specifically, what is strength? Hmm, Soka. Strength is a matter of mind. What? No, no, that's not what I meant. What I mean is, what is strength when it comes to calisthenics? How do you build muscle strength? Well, I guess that's a question for Dr. Yad. There are two main components when it comes to muscle strength. The first one being muscle size. More specifically, the greatest cross-sectional muscle area, which is when you grab a muscle and you cut it in the half at the thickest part and you expose the surface area you see there, that determines how strong a muscle is. The best way to train this is by doing hypertrophy training, bodybuilding training. But if this was the only factor that was important, then bodybuilders ah. would be the strongest athletes out there. Yet, they're not. What? Calisthenics athletes yep. and powerlifters, they're not that big, yet they're so much stronger. Mm. Why is that? Well, there's another factor that's super important. Neural properties. Neural properties in this context refers to a multitude of things. Think of the neuroplasticity of the brain. Think of the coordination required for all these muscles to work in synergy. Think of all the motor units working together. It's a lot of factors that we do know as scientists, but also a lot that we don't know. The best way to summarize neural properties in this context is the ability of the nervous system to make a movement more efficient, to optimize a movement. And this can be improved by doing skill work, which we will discuss later. To summarize, strength can be improved by increasing muscle size, which can be done through hypertrophy training. It can also be improved by improving our neural properties. This is done through skill work. See it as a company, the workforce, the employees, that's the muscle size, and everything else, the organization, the structure, the planning, that, my friend, is neural properties. I'm telling you, man, it smells amazing. You gotta try it. What, we're recording? <clears throat> right. So we now know what to do, roughly. We know that we have to increase our muscle size and to improve our neural properties. But this still sounds very ambiguous. What do we actually do? We've only discussed the theory so far. Now it's time to do practice. Starting off with how to build muscle for the front lever. So what muscles do we train? At first glance, it's hard to identify which muscles are involved since the front lever is a static exercise, meaning there's no movement. However, if we look at what gravity is trying to do, we can find out a little bit more. See how gravity is pulling me down? 
So what do I do to prevent that from happening? Well, I pull back up by doing two things. Let me show you. The first thing I do is pulling my arms towards me, like this. This is also known as shoulder extension. The second thing I've mentioned earlier in this video is scapula retraction. Now we know which movements are involved, meaning we can finally identify which muscles are responsible for that front lever. Let's take a look. For shoulder extension, we have, of course, the lats, the long head of the triceps, the rear delts, both tiers major and minor. For scapula retraction, we have the rhomboids and all three parts of the traps. <sighs> That's better. So now we know which muscles are involved in the front lever. What exercises can we do to make them bigger? Well, if you look at the shoulder extension again, and you start bending your arms slowly, you'll notice that this movement looks like a row. And if you go back to the straight arms again and you increase the range of motion, and you start bending your arms again, you'll notice that this is very familiar to a pull-up. And those are the two exercises I recommend. I recommend having a vertical pull and a horizontal pull. For vertical pull, you can do exercises like pull-ups, whether that's assisted or weighted, and you can also do lap pull-downs. My personal preference is pull-ups because it translates really well to other calisthenics movements, like the one-arm pull-up, like muscle-ups, and if you're really advanced, the butterfly, which is basically a straight on muscle up to an iron cross. As for horizontal pull, you can do exercises like bodyweight row, cable row, um, barbell row, front lever row, any kind of rowing works as long as you make sure that you pull like this. So not like this. You wanna really retract your scapula, pull your shoulder blades together as you row. My personal preference is doing a front lever row variation. So that can be a tuck front lever, advanced tuck, one leg, straddle or full. But if you can't do that yet, try an easier row exercise until you get to the level that you can do a tuck front lever row. Next to these exercises, you can also do isolation exercises to target one specific muscle that I just mentioned, like the rear delts. I personally think that most people don't need to be doing isolation work when it comes to achieving the front lever. I think by doing the vertical pull and the horizontal pull alongside the skill work that we will discuss later in this video, you can achieve the front lever. But if you think that some of the muscles that I mentioned are truly lacking, you can't target them specifically by doing isolation exercises. And you might have noticed that I didn't mention any core muscles. That's because there's this common misconception that the front lever is 80% core and 20% upper body strength. It's the opposite and not even that. It's not even 20% core, it's probably less. If you can lay on the ground and do this, then you probably have enough core strength for the front lever. If you think you're still weak in the core, you can do that exercise and maybe add some else to your routine. And we're back. Hypertrophy on itself could be a whole video, but for the sake of keeping this video short, I wanna cover five principles. The first principle is you wanna make sure that your rep range is between eight to 12 reps. For muscle growth, this is the best rep range. The second principle is you wanna make sure you have full range of motion. Meaning when you're doing a pull-up, for example, you wanna make sure you start in dead hang and you feel those muscles stretch as you pull up all the way up and down again. For rows, you wanna do the same. You wanna start in a little bit of a rounded position, feeling those back muscles stretch, then pull all the way back, squeezing those shoulder blades together, and then go all the way back. So you feel those muscles in the back stretch. The third principle is you wanna make sure your way of progressively overloading is focused on adding volume. Progressive overload is basically a fancy way of saying that you make your next workout harder than last workout so that your body adapts, gets stronger and more resilient. There are multiple ways of doing this. One way is by adding more intensity. In this context, that would mean adding more weight or making an exercise more difficult. Another way of making a workout more difficult is by adding volume. In this context, that would mean adding more reps and or sets. Adding more volume is the preferred way of progressive overload when it comes to muscle growth. In the program that I've made for you guys, I've taken care of all the thinking when it comes to this. So don't worry, just follow the program. The fourth principle could be a whole video on itself, but basically you wanna make sure you eat enough and you get enough protein in. 
If you're not eating enough and getting enough protein, your body doesn't have the energy and building blocks to grow muscle. So it's absolutely vital. The fifth principle is one that a lot of people forget and it's so important, not only when it comes to training, but also when it comes to any other domain in life. And it's very simple, sleep enough. If you're not sleeping enough, you could have the best diet, the best training method, the best recovery methods, all of that wouldn't matter because you're not sleeping enough. So please, sleep enough. Oh man, we covered a lot. We know which muscles to grow in the front lever, we know what exercises to do, and we know the best way to build muscle. I guess the next part is neural properties. We finally get to discuss what this mystical neural properties is and how to do skill work. So we finally get to discuss how to improve our neural properties. And the answer to that question is skill work. Now skill work is a lot different than hypertrophy training. It is the most specific type of training with a lot more focus on quality rather than quantity. Now what do I actually mean with specific? Specificity is a sports science principle where you do exercises most similar to the end goal exercise that you're trying to achieve, which in this case is the front lever. Let me give you an example. A dumbbell row, when compared to a tuck front lever row, or an advanced tuck front lever row, if you were to choose which one is more specific, you would always say the advanced tuck row. And when you compare the event stock row to a one leg front lever row, or maybe even a full front lever row, the full front lever row is more specific. The more specific the exercise, the higher quality the skill work, and the more gains for your neural properties. This is why skill work is typically low volume, meaning not a lot of reps and sets, but very high in intensity, meaning very high in difficulty. This is because high volume training is very fatiguing. And if you're fatigued, you're not recovered enough. And if you're not recovered enough, you're not as strong. And if you're not as strong, you're going to have to do easier exercises. And easier exercises are usually less specific. Less specificity means less quality skill work, meaning less gains for your neural properties. This is why we always need to be in a pretty good shape, very well recovered when we're doing high quality skill work. Now the best skill work exercise for the front lever is the front lever, since that is the most specific exercise. But if you're watching this video, you probably can't do a front lever, which is why I'm going to give you four exercises that will cover all the grounds when it comes to skill work for the front lever. So the first one is the supported static holds, then we have the unsupported static holds, then we have the straight arm dynamics, followed by the bend arm dynamics. Let's start off with the first one. A quick note, everything regarding form that I mentioned in chapter two of this video applies to the following movements. Starting off with the supported static hold. This is the most specific exercise out of all the exercises. The front lever lean belongs to this category. For this exercise, you start off on the ground and make sure to get the hip in line with your center of mass. This is usually in line with your hips. From here, you extend one leg. This can be the left or right leg and make sure to maintain a straight body like in the front lever where the body is parallel to the ground. One foot is on the floor. This foot assists you in holding this position. The goal is to reduce the amount of assistance as you become stronger. This causes the weight to shift from your leg to your upper body, making the exercise more difficult. Eventually, by the end of this program, you can go as far as no support leading to a full front lever. This exercise is excellent since the body is almost in the exact same position as the full front lever, including the arm shoulder angle. The next exercise is the band assisted front lever. This exercise has the same benefits. Get yourself a resistant band and make sure to not wrap it around your feet. This makes the exercise a lot less specific since the angles and force distribution changes. Instead, get it around your center of mass, your hips. From here, get into a full front lever position and focus on good form. You can make the exercise harder by getting lighter resistant bands. Then we have the unsupported static holds. These take care of areas where the supported static holds are lacking, namely coordination and balancing. Going from easiest to hardest, we have the scapula hold, the tuck front lever, the advanced tuck front lever, the one leg front lever, the straddle front lever, and the full front lever. 
and there are plenty of other progressions in between these progressions. It's okay to get creative. Then we have the straight arm dynamics. As the name suggests, it's important to keep straight arms for this exercise. Also make sure to go down slow and controlled. Again, going from easiest to hardest, the scapula pull, the tuck front lever pull, the advanced tuck front lever pull, the one leg front lever pull, the straddle front lever pull, and the full front lever pull. Last but not least, we have the bent arm dynamics. Going from easiest to hardest, we have the front lever lean row, the tuck front lever row, the advanced tuck front lever row, the one leg front lever row, the straddle front lever row, and the full front lever row. For the range of motion, get your arms to at least 90 degrees. There's no need for as much range of motion as I do unless you can do that and have that as a goal. When pulling, remain parallel to the floor. So don't do this. And one more thing, try your best to squeeze your shoulder blades together. You don't need to necessarily achieve it. The intention just needs to be there. You're still watching? Oh my God. Well, <laughs> if you've made it this far, then it's finally time for the program. You've watched so much, you've soaked up so much information, and you're ready for that last step to get the program in your hands, to go to the gym or the calisthenics park, or at home even, and start working out. And I'm really proud of you for watching and making it this far. Like, wow. Um, so without any further ado, The program that I've made makes use of a principle called periodization. Periodization is a cyclical method of planning and managing athletic or physical training and involves progressive cycling of various aspects of a training program during a specific period. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Let's simplify it. Periodization is basically having different periods with different goals. In our case, hypertrophy and neuroadaptation. Now we can't do both goals at the same time since the fatigue that hypertrophy causes makes it impossible oh, to do on. high quality skill work sets. This is why we make use of periodization. One at a time. A program that uses periodization has these periods with different goals. We refer to these periods as mesocycles. This program has a hypertrophy mesocycle and a skill mesocycle. Let's start off with the hypertrophy mesocycle. This cycle is in total six weeks with five weeks of training and one week deloading. Deload is also known as a rest week, but we do train during that week. I'll explain more later. During this cycle, the goal is to maximize muscle growth for the front lever muscles. Skill work is not the priority, meaning you can't expect a lot of gains in your front lever strength during this phase. And that is okay. Please do not get discouraged. Trust the plan. Let's check out the program. You'll notice there are skill workouts and hypertrophy workouts. You can do both on the same day, but always make sure to do skill work first. You can also decide to spread it out throughout the week, like this for example. The amount of sets change each week for most exercises. Like discussed before, in the hypertrophy cycles, the focus should be on adding volume to the hypertrophy days, which is what is happening here. Skill is put on maintenance and the amount of volume is low. This is intentional. These are the exercises that need to be done for this many reps. Choose an exercise for each category. A list of examples of the exercises for each category can be found here at the bottom. Decide on an exercise that you can do within the rep range for all sets. Only increase the difficulty or weight of an exercise if you're able to stick within the rep range. So if you can only do one set of five kilo pull-ups of eight reps, and then the next set you do six reps, you should probably choose less weight or an easier exercise. Once you've filled in this sheet, Print it or take it with you on the phone and start working out. Oh yeah, and don't forget to do a thorough warm-up. Don't want to get injured. For the hypertrophy sets, I recommend resting for about 2-5 to five minutes. And for the skill sets, I recommend resting a bit longer since quality is really key. So about 3-5 to five minutes. In between resting, you could watch your videos on your form. I strongly recommend filming yourself. And another reminder, remember to do full range of motion. Always try to do better than last week. Even if it's only one rep more on one of the sets, that is still considered to be progress. 
You can add weight to your exercise or make the exercise more difficult if you notice that you hit the upper end of the rep range consistently. Meaning if you're doing pull-ups for example and you get 12 reps on the first set, 11 reps on the second set, 10 reps on the third set, you can probably add weight to the exercise. We even encourage you to add weight to the exercise as long as you're able to stick within the rep range. The last week is a deload. During this week, you do a lot less volume and you even half the intensity so that you give your body the chance to rest. Even if you feel like you might not need this, trust me, this greatly reduces your chance of getting injured and preps you for the next cycle. Alright, so that's it for the hypertrophy cycle. Let's go to the skill cycle. This cycle is shorter. It's in total 5 weeks with 4 weeks of training and 1 week of deloading. The focus is skill, meaning hypertrophy is put on maintenance. Let's see the program. The amount of volume is greatly reduced, which is perfect because now you're much more recovered and have much more energy to focus on skill work. Because again, you can't do skill work if you're not recovered enough. The volume is so low that you might feel like you're not even doing much. But trust me, that's the beauty of skill work. But at the same time, it can be frustrating since it takes a lot of patience. Each day has a different focus. The one day there's more focus on the unsupported holds, the other on the supported holds, and there's one on straight arm dynamics. The last week is a deload, and it might feel unnecessary, but trust me, your connective tissue really needs the rest. This again is to prevent injuries from happening, but it's also to make you recover enough to perform at a higher level next cycle. So we've covered both mesocycles. I recommend starting off with two hypertrophy cycles followed by two skill cycles. After that, you can decide on doing more hypertrophy cycles or more skill cycles. This choice really depends on whether you're still making progress in skill cycles. If you are making progress, you should probably keep doing more skill cycles. If you're not making any progress, it probably means you need more muscle mass, meaning you should do some more hypertrophy cycles. Important to note is that this program only focuses on the front lever. You can additionally do a push routine parallel to this routine. But if you decide to do more pull work, please be aware that you might end up doing too much training. This can ultimately lead to diminishing returns or even an injury. And that's it. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this video, for making it all the way till the end. You can find the download link for the program in the description below. It's free. It's always going to be free. And you might have noticed that this video was a lot of information. So if you're planning on doing the program, please consider rewatching some parts since it's just a lot of information. I try to keep it as short as possible, but this, I just really wanted to make sure I answer all the questions you had and you have. And if you still have any more questions, um, go ahead and ask them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. Uh, and I also would love to see you guys' progress. So if you have Instagram and you would like to share your progress, tag me. You can find my handle right there or in the description below um, so that I can see how you guys are doing. And if you're coming across any problems, I can maybe help out if I have time. <laughs> um, subscribe because I really want to do something with YouTube. I really want to make more content like this. This is a true passion of mine. Um, back in my days, there weren't as many tutorials out there as there are now. And I want to fill in a gap uh, where I teach a little bit from a scientific standpoint, but also from my 12 years of training in total, I've gathered a lot of experience and I really want to share that. And I want to do that uh, in the way that I did in this video. So if you like that way, please subscribe recommend it to your friends. It would help out a lot. Um, and that's it. So again, thank you for watching. Uh, this was Dr. Yacht and good luck on your fun lever progress. Bye-bye.